Welcome to the Rams Review from Rams TV. Owen Bradley with former Derby captain Sean Barker alongside here to bring you reaction to a defeat for Derby County this afternoon. The Rams' long wait for a win at Bramall Lane goes on. They've lost by a goal to nil to Sheffield United today. Pretty tight encounter. The difference between the sides, a second half free kick from Gustavo Harmer which beat Jakob Videl Zetterstrom at his first front post. Uh, Paul Wall and Chris Wilder both booked in the first half. It was pretty feisty there, but the Rams, with the exception of Nathaniel Mendes Lang hitting the post, not able to muster much on target. So Derby's record now stands at three home wins and three away defeats to start this championship season. Still reasonably handily placed in the table and we'll show you that later along with all the results from elsewhere in the championship this weekend uh, so far. Before we hear from Paul Warren, let's hear from Sean Barker alongside former Derby skipper as I mentioned. Um, what are your big takeaways from today, Barks? Um, I thought we competed for the first 45 minutes. There wasn't a huge amount of difference between what is one of the better teams in the division in Sheffield United at home at Bramall Lane and ourselves. Um, a couple of chances either side. But the second half, a little bit disappointed with when we went a goal behind and, and I've got my doubts on how the the, um, the wall was set up and, and, and how easily it was beat at the front post. We, we never really tested that, the back line of, of Sheffield United. We didn't get the ball forward. We didn't create enough... Um, kind of have it for, for Sheffield United in the remaining 10 minutes because it stayed at 1-0. They had a couple of opportunities which they didn't make the most of and while it's at 1-0, have you got enough to, to maybe create or muster a chance or two in the remaining 5-10 minutes of the game and we didn't do that. So long spells, there, were, there was good signs but at the same time there were some disappointing moments, especially building from the back where we lost the ball far too cheaply and on another day Sheffield United might have punished us that little bit more. And more from Barks but let's get some reaction from Bram on lane, here's Derby head coach Paul Warren. Yeah, disappointed. Um, I can't say over the course of the game Sheffield United probably deserved it but it doesn't mean I'm happy about it. And I felt like it was going to be one of them games that goes down to a set-piece goal and unfortunately the midfielder who took it is probably only one of three or four in the league that could possibly put it in the top corner. I'm not too sure my goalkeeper deserved it. So, um, yeah, I thought for a large periods of the game we went toe-to-toe -to -toe pretty well. We created a couple of chances first half, obviously at the post. Um, but second half we didn't create enough. And I think, uh, you know, obviously Sheffield United put the you know, tight screws on us, so to speak. And credit to them they're a very good team full of very good players but I thought our lads defended well put their bodies on the line but we didn't really create enough and it only after did they score then you know we had to try and give them different questions to answer really we changed the shape we changed a few of the players because you know I always asked the lads to gas out and there were some tired bodies out there so uh, yeah overall pleased and proud but obviously disappointed and I know it's a results business before some genius says it but uh, I just felt that that one opportunity second half would have been a cracker if Marcus could have found Cade and cleaned through I'd back my house on Cade and put it in and the 1-1 one -one would have been fitting and it would have changed the atmosphere in here but um, unfortunately it wasn't to be. You played five games since the Blackburn game where you, you were unhappy afterwards since then do you feel that the lads have really started to acclimatise and feel their way back into the division the two defeats you've had have been narrow ones away from home yeah I think so and I mean if you go in our dressing room now the lads are like heartbroken so they're not like oh that was alright gaffer it was only 1-0 against like probably the I don't know league's favourites they're not like that they're like raging that they didn't win and that's what you want and that's you want them to turn up here today with a belief they're going to win if they don't believe they're going to win you might as well you know get rid of all of them and get another group in. They have to have a belief, or, or similarly me, by the way. So they have to have a belief, and I thought today they did believe that they were going to get something, and in large parts it looked like that. However, in parts, you know, when we're tired and they're pressing and we can't move the ball quick enough, you know, you're playing against really good players. It's about getting the best out of our group, and I thought at times we had that, and in previous games we've had that, and I'm really proud of the fact that, you know, after the Blackburn game, uh, we've just become a lot more solid. The out of possession stuff from the lads is really good. Um, and today we just didn't have the cutting edge in the final third, um, which is the disappointing part. Is it testament to the performance at Watford and today that you're playing against teams at the top end of the division and they're coming in up the tunnel afterwards pretty relieved that the final whistle's gone, that you've made life difficult for them? 
Yeah, I think, you know, the last 15 minutes it was literally just win throw-ins and, and don't let us have the ball because we're a danger. And I understand they celebrate a win, as I would. I would be well happy if if we won. But I, I, I think it's testament to the lads that, um, yeah, they were that pleased to win. But it's also testament to the lads that we turn up here expecting to win. All the fans who were behind the goal are turning up thinking, right, come on try and entertain us and, and the lads have, have given everything so I, I think yeah the way that they were pleased and so they should be and the way that we were disappointed we haven't come here today and thought oh yeah it's, it's alright it? we'll, we'll bounce on to the next one We've, we'll watch it back and we'll show the lads how we need to be better in crucial moments and how we can help them uh, but you know we look at our wounds but we're not embarrassed we're not embarrassed by the performance we if you know the lads to the man really give everything they've got so I can't leave here disappointed with them. How's Callum Elder? He came off with his head down midway through the second half. Yeah, his groin's uh, tight um, when the lad chopped him up uh, when they had the penalty claim I think he felt it and then he waved to the bench so obviously we tried to make the sub as soon as we could and um, get him off as soon as we could but when I shook his hand when he walked past me I went, you alright? And he sort of went, no, I can tell by the way lads answer there's, you know, there's different no's that was a no of he's tweaked something so um, yeah unfortunately um, it's another one who we might be missing for a bit of, bit of time I know you spoke earlier in the week about the 400 games in management two year anniversary of yourself and the USCB coach and staff joining tomorrow is there ever an opportunity for you to look back and think this is the progress that we've made over the last two years because you came in Derby in League One you now in the championship, and you're coming away disappointed that you've only lost one. You've lost one nil away from home at a team that were in the Premier League last year. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, in fairness, I could play Man City. I'd be disappointed I lost. But you're right. I mean, they have made some uh, phenomenal signings, and at times we did quiet them, quieting them down. So I'm really proud of the group. I'm really proud of my coaches because how tireless they work, and my analysts, and my fitness coaches, and all that. And I'm really proud of making 400 games. But I'm. Um, what gives me uh, a great spirit about the whole thing is like all the people who have touched my life since I've been a manager. You know, the players that have you know sacrificed and worked hard, and the coaches that have gone beyond um, to enable me to get 400 games. So, and I'm really proud of how the club's going. I am. Like we leave here today and we're disappointed we lost one nil to, like you say, an ex Premier League club. I don't know how much money they're spending in the summer, and I'm not. I'm not. You know, dissing them for that. If I had it, I'd spend it, wouldn't I? So. Uh, in, in due respect and they've signed very good players but you've got Kiefer Moore Premier League player obviously I'm biased but um, he's had a great career plays for Wales Cash who's like two foot smaller than him competed brilliantly with him today you know you've got Burrows who is arguably the most you know, he definitely is the quickest left back in the league they paid you know three four million for him at Peterborough he didn't really get a look in today so there's a lot of brilliant things about this team and you know and that is due to all the hard work that goes in on them and I'm you know I'm really proud to be part of it I am because it's my team my boys my my men who go out and 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 try and perform for the for the fans who kindly came and kindly clapped them off so yeah I'm really proud of you know, everybody who has you know been a ledge that's Derby boss Paul Warner. We should say congratulations to him on his milestones this weekend. Uh, but, Sean, we certainly, certainly saw uh, the quality of, of Sheffield United today and the quality of Gustavo Harmer uh, with the free kick that ultimately settled things. Yeah, uh, and it was a debatable free kick as well. I think it was Sam Osborne that, that went to ground and looked like he'd stuck a leg out. Whether it was a foul or not, I'm not so sure. It was a brilliant strike. It was a, a position where there was two players stood over it um, Surely they were looking to shoot. I'm just surprised there was only three in the wall. We had Ebu Adams one side with a yard or two of space from the wall and Mendes Lang worried about the run on the left-hand side a yard or two away from the wall, which only left three in that wall. Now, from that sort of distance, from the quality that's standing over the ball, I'm surprised there wasn't that fourth. And it just makes it that little bit harder for Harmer to get the ball over and round and beat uh, Zetterstrom at that front post. So... Strange setup, but you can't argue with the finish. Uh, no doubt that the Jakob Vidal Zetterstrom was the busier goalkeeper, and, and there's a string of opportunities that, that he can point to today and, and say how important he was. Even in the first what two minutes with the save that he made, which might have been the best of the bunch. It, it was the best, and, and you don't think you recognise it until you saw it on repeat and, and you, you saw it in slow motion. It was a brilliant save where he just gets a touch, which ends up um, kind of diverting the ball away from goal. But again, he was excellent. He, he came and claimed a couple of 
of crosses, made three or four really good saves. Um, he looks composed. There's a couple of moments when he was being pressed and playing out from the back and he wasn't the only guilty party where he gave it away cheaply and had to make a save right at the death from uh, Peck, who was excellent for Sheffield United. So the in-possession stuff in the second half was, was disappointing. I thought we played into Sheffield United's hands. They pressed well and they won the ball well back, uh, back well. But I didn't see it go forward quick enough. I, don't, I didn't see us maybe get into the, the front players to ask a few questions of the centre-half. And, and when it went to 1-0, they were still in the ascendancy. They still looked like getting the sec second goal. Um, but we'd never really laid a glove on them in the second half. But for me, when it's 1-0, you've still got to keep going. You've got to keep trying. You've got to st still ask questions. And that was a disappointing thing for me in that second half. Yeah, no real chances for Derby second half. There were a couple in the first. Nathaniel Mendes line clearly desperate for that first championship goal of, of the season, hitting the post. And, and also there's the opportunity seconds in. Maybe it's a different game if Derby go in front. Of course it is, yeah. It, it changed the whole complexity of the game. And... Um, Mendes Lang had the shot, it was um, just hits the outside of the post and at that, that stage that it could have gone either way and I said at half time, at this point, either side can win this game. Uh, you've got to expect Sheffield United to be strong, um, they're going to be strong over the course of the season at home, especially at Bramall Lane, so the performance, there's nothing to be kind of concerned about with the performance and the result, um, you can hold your heads up high, I just don't think Sheffield United were at full tilt today. And, and when they're not, and there's an opportunity, I thought there was an opportunity. If we were a little bit better, a little bit more detail, a little bit more quality, they could have had a tough time this afternoon, Sheffield, Sheffield United. But ultimately, it felt quite comfortable for them in the last 20, 25 minutes. And that is three wins on the bounce and three consecutive clean sheets as well for Sheffield United, who continue that unbeaten start to the new championship season. Defeat for Derby then. Let's get some more reaction from the camp. Here's defender Aaron Cashin. Um... It's a tough one, really. Disappointed, uh, all in all, because um, I think first half it was quite good. Uh, we we limit, limited them to chances, and um, we're disciplined. We, we know how good they are, um, and we had a game plan, and we sort of stuck to it. And I felt like we maybe was better on the ball, with, but second half, you know, we sort of um, played into their hands a little bit. I think, obviously, disappointed with the goal. Um, cause it's a it's a hell of a strike, and um, maybe if, you know that don't go in could get a different outcome out of the game, you know. They push on and um, we might nick, nick one on the counter and it just it just settles things down if it's still nil-nil. But um, so got some strike from the boy. Um, so, yeah, disappointed in that, but we worked hard. But sometimes I think um, maybe maybe worked a little bit too hard and we gassed out a little bit uh, towards the end. Well, the timing of the goal is the biggest factor because, like you say, in the first half, the game plan really seems to be working. Yeah, yeah, like, obviously, we had a few chances in the first half and... Um, we knew obviously coming here it's going to be tough so we weren't expecting many chances but we knew we could definitely hit them on the counter and uh, cause some carnage but um, yeah the timing of the goal is not great and then they just they have all the cards then and they, they sat in and they um, they sort of let us like step in and stuff and um, you know we sort of caused our own problems at times which um, something we need to work on and, and definitely get better at but um, yeah just disappointed all the more. Positives are there that you can take back to Pride Park next week? Um, to be fair, I don't think we give up. I mean, towards the end it gets a bit scrappy and we get a bit loose and it gets a bit open, but uh, that's just from our like desire to try and win and nick something. And, um, yeah, it didn't get pretty at times, so I think we can maybe learn off that. But our intentions and our, and our fight and our desire to, to try and nick something um, was there. Uh, we didn't give up and, like I say, the first half we was good. We, was, we kept our shape, we were disciplined and we... And we created um, the odd chance, and yeah, there's a lot of positives to take out of the game. Um, so that's that's what we can take on to a Saturday. But yeah, at this point. Thanks, Cash. That's Starby defender Erin Cashin. Results are from the Championship weekend so far. Hull got their first win of the season uh, last night. Victories at lunchtime for Norwich and for Sunderland, whose brilliant start to the campaign continues. Some interesting storylines in the three o'clock games. Bristol City came from behind to beat Oxford United. Liam Manning getting the better of his old club in the end and saving his blushes there. Burnley got a last-minute winner to deny Portsmouth, who are still yet to win a game. As are Cardiff, who lost 2-0 at home to Leeds. The home side also had a man sent off. A victory for Swansea, victory for Luton as well, who came from behind to beat Sheffield Wednesday. And West Brom 
they continue their good start as well with victory over Plymouth. And in fact, they are top of the table after their victory today. Sheffield United uh, would be third if not for their points deduction. They should be on 14 points rather uh, than 12. Derby drop uh, just a single place down to 10th. Uh, nine points from their opening six games is a pretty good return, though. At the bottom, you can see the two sides uh, still without a win. Portsmouth and Cardiff, uh, Preston and Coventry uh, play tomorrow. And that's all from us for now. If you want more reactions, it'll be on the website, dcfc.co.uk. But from me, Barks, and the rest of the Rams TV team, thank you for watching. Goodbye.